what's up everybody and uh, thank you for watching this video i hope that you are going to enjoy it in today's video we're going to be putting together the new frame from impulse rc and this is the apex evo 5 and this is just a variation of the well-known apex 5 uh, the main difference between this guy and the previous version of the apex 5 is that with this frame you can actually mount a o3 air unit with the previous version you are not able to mount a o3 air unit uh, that was simply because the space for the camera was just too narrow uh, to give impulse as a credit they have released an adapter that will allow you to mount the o3 air unit with the previous version of this frame it is available on get fpv and i'll put the link uh, for that adapter in case you like to use it but in my case i'm going to be using this frame on a new build that i'm going to be working on all right so right rip this baby out and we're going to find where we everything we have inside and we got the arms we got a package with everything on the board so look like we should have everything we need to put this guy together and you get this little card here which is a warranty and you have to go and register your frame in case you break it and post rc gonna send you another one i believe no i never broke any of my impulse rc so i never actually never tried this but i haven't heard anything bad about the warranty we are gonna start a build by mounting those little press nuts on the arm and you really cannot mess up this part because there is only one way the press knot can go on the arm and what i usually do to mount my press knot is that i use one of my m3 screw and i kind of just screw my press knot on it and we're gonna make sure it go all the way down and from here i'm just gonna tighten my screw and uh, this actually gonna put your press knot in place and voila we are pretty much done as i said earlier you can really mess up this part because if you look at the arm the top portion of the arm you got a small indentation that's why your press knot gonna go and if you look on this side the top portion on the arm is an indentation for your motor screw the bottom portion is completely flat and i'm gonna do the same thing for all the rest of those one thing i need to bring to your attention when putting the press knot on the arm you need to make sure that the press knot are completely flush with the rest of the arm and after my camera i'm gonna be able to show you that let me try to zoom in a little bit uh, see it is completely flush actually you can see they're actually slightly deeper than the rest of the arm so that's how you know that your press knot are actually uh, well seated and for some of you that may be asking uh, the thickness of those arm if i'm not wrong should be about five millimeter okay so we got 5.5 next we're gonna be working on the upper main plates the apex evo 5 is a split deck frame so you got two main plates uh, this is the upper main plate and here we have the bottom main plates uh, it can be a little confusing but one of the easiest way to figure out which one is the upper and which one is the bottom is that on the upper main plate you have those small indentation while on the lower one you don't have them this is actually the bottom portion of the main plate and this is the top portion of the main plate and what we're going to do now is we're going to be adding some press knots on this plate and the press knot going to go on the other holes on all four points press knot going to be on the top side of the upper main plate and just as we did with the arm we're going to do the same process so this is the bottom portion of the upper main plate with the indentation we're going to work on the other side and i got my little helping screw 
this ring is pretty. Sleek, I would say. Uh, so we're gonna put it on. And just screw it in place until it's slightly tight with the main plate and we're just gonna screw it and in this case you're just gonna screw it in place until you get some resistance or you cannot screw it anymore uh, don't try to screw it too hard because you may end up stripping the carbon which is not good so i got this one in and i'm gonna do the same for the whole three hole next what we need to do is mount the screw for our electronic stack at this point you got two decisions to make uh, first of all you need to decide if you're going to be using a 20 by 20 stack or a 30 by 30 stack and second you need to figure out which screw you're going to be using for your stack uh, the kit does come with two set of screws. Uh, those are 16 millimeter. Those are the shorter one and the longer one are 20 millimeter. But in my case, I'm going to be using the 20 millimeter one. And since I'm going to be using a 30 by 30 stack, so I'm going to be using the middle holes for my build. And very simple. You got to learn the tension. You just drop your screw in there. And from here, the only thing left to do is to add our M3 nuts and screw them in place. Those nuts can be a little hard to screw them all the way down the screw. So I uh, use a emo start, then you can just use any tool you want to, to make it easier for you. But I'm just gonna use the emo start and we're gonna keep on screwing until we get all the way to the upper main plate all the way down to the upper main plate we are going to repeat the same process on all the other for all the other schools so this is what the final result look like now that we are done with our screw for our electronic stack we're going to put this main plate to the side and we're going to start working on adding the arm to the bottom main plate for this part of the build, we're gonna be using our arms, the bottom main plate, the little impulse key, some spacers, eight millimeter head cap bolt, and a 16 millimeter head cap bolt. Until this point of the frame build, we've been working with a M2X driver, but for the arm bolts, we're gonna be using a 2.5X screw. Right, so we're gonna take a little head cap screw put it in the washer and next we are going to align our arm with the inside holes you got four of them there we go, with those inside holes and we're just gonna put our screw Put the arm at this point you don't need to tighten the screw too much we're just gonna loosely screw them in place and now we can just drop a key we may have to play a little bit with the arms in order to drop the key in place and Sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you may have to take one of the arm out. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Gonna make it a little easier. Yeah, so what I did is just I loosen up some of the screws. There you go. So the key is in place. Now that it is in place, we can actually tighten those screws just a little more. Don't get them too tight. Now we just need to add a upper main plate. And we're going to add the 16 millimeter head cap bolt to the rest of the frame. 
and you may have to play a little bit in order to get the screw to go in. And now we can just add the upper main frame. There is one, and we have to repeat the process for the other three. And again, sometimes the hole may not be aligning, but if you just move your arm just a little bit and we go a little bit, you'll be able to get your screw to go in. You don't need to force it. This is maybe the hardest part of the build because the measurements are very tight. At first, you may feel like it's not gonna fit. Just keep on working on moving the arm and it will fit, I guarantee you. And once you get everything in, now we are ready to get everything tight. Right, so we are ready to add a spacer to the frame. Uh, you get two set of spacer in the kit you got a shorter one that will go in the back of your frame and the long one gonna go in the middle and we are gonna be using those m3 screws and they are about 9.5 millimeter yeah let's put it in here now feel free to use Loctite because the spacer are metal, but I never use Loctite on my drone and so far he hasn't burned me yet. Now on my Ailey, I always use Loctite because helicopters are prone to a lot more vibration than quadcopters. But if you want, you can use Loctite. That won't hurt anything. Uh, a two longer spacer gonna go on those two holes. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're done. So we are finally ready to add a camera side plate. Uh, this is the design they went with. And those side plates are actually made of some type of metal. I don't know if it's just iron or if it's aluminum. And you got the little 3D printed part and that of course is to help with vibration now according to what impost rcs put on a website uh, this little setup will work on any camera it can be either the o3 air units or the original o3 or any of the analog camera so it's just all depend on the way you're going to be placing them and let's see we are pretty much done as far as the build go a little dent in here i think the dent portion will go on the inside or on the outside i can't so i think that's how it's going to look and to attach this to the rest of the frame, we are going to be using the same screw we use for our spacer. All right. So in case you wonder how the same space will be matching different camera, and those little 3D print parts can either go from the inside there you go uh, from the inside you can see the gap is actually smaller let me see if I can get one of my old analog camera to see if we're gonna get them to fix and this is a cardex camera so we clearly have m no space for that the other one piece kind of 
coming loss. This is one. This one side is pretty tight. Let's see if I can get one of my original DJI camera. And that is for the original camera. And for the O3, we're just gonna have to wait until I finish my build. But I believe for the O3, you're gonna have to take those 3D part out and actually mount them on the outside parts. There we go. And this little piece go on this side. Now you can see we do have a much bigger gap for the O3 camera. That is a very clever design. Right, so at this point, only thing left to do is add the top plates. And we'll be using the same screw we use for our spacer. This is the back and this side is the front. So we are pretty much done putting the frame together. And I'm just gonna go through a couple of things that I really didn't go over when doing this build. And just talk a little bit about the frame itself. And look like uh, this is pretty much an Apex 5, but uh, Empos made a couple changes in order to fit the O3 air units in the back of the frame. Uh, they made the back a little wider for the O3 air units since it's slightly wider than the DJI Vista. Uh, you do have mounts for both a 20 by 20 and a 25 by 25 for the O3 air units. And of course, they did a major change in the front in order to also uh, fit the O3 Air Units camera. And other thing that came with the kit is uh, this little guy. And if you don't know, Ampos RC has been pretty much obsessed with grounding the Vista. Uh, according to them, it may lead you to some issue if you put the Vista or the air unit or any VTX directly to the frame. And this is the little piece they give you in order to help grounding or keeping the Vista. I don't even know. The only thing I know that I have multiple drone with uh, Vista and air units and all three air units and I never had an issue with grounding. But uh, this is an option, and once I put a video for the quad build, I'll show you how to use it. You do have a set of screws, little M2 screws, and that's for the camera, and of course the O2 air units that I'll be using for this build. You do have a set of screws, and those are for your motors. You do have this little 3D printed part, and that's for the antenna on your VTX. You do have a little battery pad and an impulse RC battery strap, but I never use those because those are very, very cheap. I always use different strap for my batteries. Plastic guard for your motor wire. Ah, so we also have a pair of landing skid, and I actually forgot to cover this little piece. Uh, this is a bumper, and that's supposed to go in the front of your frame is to protect the front from impact and you got this little piece here and that actually go under your top plates is to help your battery strap from sliding around and i believe that is pretty much it for this video i hope that you enjoyed and just stay tuned for the build video for this frame thank you for watching guys and i will see you on the next one